Hey guys, it's your boy Rich here. The first thing you notice about me tonight is that I don't have lenses in my glasses. And the reason for that is because I have a lighting ring and I don't want it to cause glare in the lenses for you. The second reason is because it makes me look smarter and I need all the help I could get. Now, if you're new to the channel, I've owned, built, and rebuilt uh, some very interesting cars in my day, a Z06, M5, Jeep SRT8. I'm sure I'm getting a few, but as of late, the channel has been about my Tesla rebuilds. And a buddy of mine that's also into the Tesla rebuild game rebuilt his car that needed minor repair, and he had it up and running within a couple months. Now, he reached out to me with an interesting gem. He recently got a letter in the mail from Tesla stating that there was an airbag recall that states the following. The NHTSA has determined that a defect may exist in certain 2013 model year vehicles equipped with a Takata airbags. Over time, moisture intrusion could cause the inflator to rupture when the passenger's frontal airbag deploys in a crash. If the inflator ruptures, metal fragments could strike vehicle occupants, potentially resulting in serious injury or death. This industry-wide recall is taking place according to the schedule previously determined by the NHTSA. What Tesla will do Tesla will replace the airbag in your vehicle free of charge. Replacement parts are available. Tesla will soon contact you to schedule an appointment to repair your vehicle. Tesla wants to ensure that your vehicle provides the highest possible level of safety. If you believe that Tesla has failed or is unable to remedy this defect without charge and within a reasonable time, you may submit a complaint to the administrator National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. The main point of that letter is that over time, the airbag wears down, and when the airbag deploys, instead of saving your life, the loose metal fragments could fly into your face and cause bodily harm. He thought to himself, good on Tesla to honor this warranty to help out their customers, but when he actually scheduled the appointment, they looked into the system and they saw his car was registered as an unsupported vehicle. Now, an unsupported vehicle is a vehicle that Tesla deems no longer roadworthy, such as a vehicle that was in a prior accident, and was deemed a total loss by an insurance company. The astronomical repair costs can cause these cars to be totaled very easily. And some of the reasons for the high repair insurance costs is that the car parts are expensive, they're made of aluminum, and if there's an issue with the car, you can only go to Tesla to get it fixed for about $180 per hour. Sometimes you could also wait months to get your car fixed, but not only that, but once the car is in the system is unsupported, you can't buy parts for the car. Now, this is something that I feared for a while, but never thought they would actually get to this point. The NHTSA requires that they do this repair free of charge. It says it right there in the documentation. But with Tesla saying that the car has to be recertified for the price of $1,500, and Tesla may deem the car undrivable even after the recertification. So what could happen is that you could pay Tesla the hefty sum of $1,500. Tesla could deem the car unsupportable, and they could have $1,500 of your money and an unsupported vehicle. Now, after speaking to Tesla as to why they'd wanna do this, they wanna make sure the car is safe to work on due to the high voltage nature. But guess what? There's no guesswork involved. They can easily go to the diagnostic menu, tell you any high voltage faults, contact or resistance, and how many times you fired in the driver's seat. Now, before I get to the conclusion, I wanna bring up another unsupported vehicle story. A friend of mine purchased a salvaged Tesla, brought it for the recertification, gave Tesla 1300, and they came back to him and said they'd have to give them an additional 16,000 for the car to be certified and to re-enable supercharging. He said he'd come back when he had the money and on his way home, he realized that Tesla gave him a nice parting gift and they disabled his autopilot. When he reached back out to Tesla, they responded to him and said, we could take a look at it once the car is recertified. I understand in the past that my dealing with customer service from Tesla hasn't been great. I don't need the lug nuts too. I just need the little tiny plastic covers that go over the uh -oh. lug nuts. Oh, what do you need those for? Uh, I'm, I'm sorry? What do you need those for? Why? Oh, oh, oh. oh sorry. Hold, hold on one second. Hold on. Sure. Um, no problem. You just need your registration. All right. Let me look you up. What's your VIN? All right. It's uh, 5YJSA1. In our system as a prior salvage vehicle, so we can't offer any support on it. Oh, uh, it's just the app that I need, though. I, I just need the app for the sorry, phone. Sorry. It's our, it's our policy. Uh, now I know Tesla has an image to maintain and they barely have enough staff and resources to keep their current cars on the road, but this isn't a front bumper or a headlight. This is a documented safety issue. And I can only think to myself, what if my experience had been with other cars that I've owned in the past? I've owned a Chrysler 300C SRT8 that was a rebuilt car. They replaced the seatbelt tensioners and airbag free of charge. Regardless of the prior accident status, I had a BMW M5 I rebuilt as well. They addressed all my safety concerns and informed me 
that the damages the vehicle has sustained prior had nothing to do with the powertrain and they still honor the rest of the factory powertrain warranty. Now, a year and a half ago, John McNeil of Tesla Service said he was working on a plan to help salvage Tesla owners work on their own vehicles with diagnostic tools and perhaps even get access to purchase parts. Now, I attempted to reach out to John McNeil last week but then I heard the news a couple months ago, he left Tesla to go work for Lyft. Now my friend gave Tesla another call to see if he could get a different answer from someone else. And the same service person he talked to said he talked to someone upper management and they said that there was nothing that they can do. Now the plan now is to reach out to the NHTSA and see where things go from here. Let me know what you guys think about this one in the comment section. Should Tesla be allowed to determine which cars it does and does not service, depending on whether or not that fee is paid for inspection or should they abide by the NHTSA's rules and make sure that all cars are repaired free of charge? Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell on this one, guys. I'll be reaching out to the NHTSA for my friend on this one, and I'll keep you guys posted as to what they say. See y'all later.